Iceland's Decode Genetics is at the forefront of genetic research and it's managed to sequence infections so accurately that scientists can tell who has passed the virus to whom. And the Taiwanese government, just a stone's throw from mainland China, managed to leverage its high levels of trust amongst its population to stop the virus from ever getting out into the wider community. When I spoke to its digital minister, Audrey Tang, back in May, Taiwan's coronavirus death toll was seven. When I spoke to her recently, that death toll was still seven. After nearly 250 virus-free days, life in Taiwan is thriving. Parades, businesses, schools and universities have remained open and an economic boom has followed. The only new infections have been from incoming visitors. This near unblemished record has been achieved by all communities within Taiwan taking responsibility for themselves and when outbreaks do occur, finding their own solutions to get back on track. And as for the people who were found to have spread the virus, Audrey says it was important they were able to be honest so that the people they'd been in contact with could be properly traced. As a case in point, she told us the story of someone who didn't initially want to admit who she'd been in contact with. Initially, in the interview of the first day after she gets diagnosed with COVID, says that she stays at home, didn't meet anyone, she didn't know why she would contract the virus. And on the second day, um, because of the interview, um, interviewer skill, I guess, uh, she eventually admitted that she is a professional worker in the intimate hostess bar. Now, there was a very large kind of social pressure around that time in April for the CECC, the Common Santa, to essentially threaten to put people in jail for refusing to collaborate with contact tracing or threaten to shut down entire businesses by a top-down order. Instead, the authorities got these intimate bars to close down and brainstorm their own plan for dealing with the local outbreak. This is very fortunate because around the same time, in nearby jurisdictions, we have seen the second or third wave uh, because of the nightlife district that went underground. Meanwhile, Iceland's population, who were already used to having their blood taken and stored for future genetic research, were helping scientists to track individual mutations of the virus as it passed from person to person. This meant that researchers could work out who was infecting who, and it helped pinpoint the cause of the most recent wave, two tourists entering Iceland in August. We have sequenced the virus from every single person diagnosed in Iceland. It's important to know how the virus is spreading because on the basis of that you can modify your containment effort. Should I close down the, the health clubs or should I close down the co coffee shop, all right? I mean, if, if the experience is that the, the people working in the coffee shops got in, infected in the health club, you have more reason to close the health club than the coffee shop, but, but basically this gives you the subtleties of, of data needed to make your decisions. And it's very important when you're making your argument before the politicians who eventually have the power to decide what is done, is to be able to show them how this spread. And Taiwan's use of data has also been crucial to their efforts. For example, in digital fencing that tracks those quarantined using mobile phone signals. But would this approach work in Western countries where people seemingly don't like governments knowing their business or being told what to do? I think in Taiwan, people really don't like being told what to do. And had we introduced new data collection methods, we will probably fail. Instead, it's been from the bottom up, with Taiwan's tech community designing mask maps to make sure everyone got their allocation, while messaging about wearing masks was conveyed, slightly uniquely, by the government spokes dog. Remember the dog memes? Because this is a, you know, a very, very cute dog. I mean, who can be against a cute dog? Uh, telling you to physically distance from one another. The same tactics were part of a recruitment campaign for which Audrey dressed up. The cat version of the digital minister is far more compelling than the official version of the digital minister. 
Right, well, <laughs> anyway, back to the serious stuff now. And Iceland's research has shown that children are only half as likely as adults to get infected in the first place or to spread it once they are infected. Other research from Iceland now shows that people who have been infected retain antibodies for longer than previously thought. But why some people are vulnerable to infection and others aren't continues to elude even the experts here. There are probably an awful lot of extraordinarily rare qualities that make a very, very small percentage of the population resistant. And there is probably a fairly rare qualities that make another small percentage of the population vulnerable. But the most important determinant in all of these societies is behavior. And this spring, the epidemic was sufficiently dangerous to con convince Iceland as this unruly nation to behave properly. And is it just a learning curve that we all have to go through until all of us, as individuals, improve our own levels of knowledge? I do think it is necessary for a liberal democracy to go through this collective uh, learning process because essentially the top-down, shutdown, lockdown uh, measures only go so far. Uh, people really do need to understand epidemiology. That is to say, we don't make this false dilemma choice between human right and democracy on one side uh, and uh, countering the pandemic, public health on the other. But with these lessons learnt, 2021 is looking a bit brighter, especially with the vaccine now on our doorsteps. It was amazing to see sort of, in, for example, in the pharmaceutical industry, how competitors turned their back together. We're, we are absolutely convinced that they were working towards a common goal. I think that we are much, much better prepared to deal with the uh, next pandemic than this one. <laughs>